Is that it? Are we on? We're on! Good! What time is it? Afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever the case may be. Welcome to Cross Examinations. I am your host, Mike S. Miller. You are on Blacklist Universe. This is my channel, wherein I do this show for certain six days a week. Uh, Cross Examinations, then on Saturdays we do God Squad, and then um, the rest of this channel... <laughs> Well, tonight we're doing Drawn and Quartered. Drawn and Quartered. It's a drawing competition, live drawing competition with nine professional comic book artists, including tonight, Douglas Tenaple, creator of Earthworm Jim. If you are unaware, uh, he has a new campaign out called Bigfoot Bill 2 on Indiegogo. Please do check it out if you have not already. Let's go in and say hi to some people. Oh, what else do I do? It doesn't really matter what I do. I'm a guy here to talk about uh, some political shit canary going on the sjw democrats kill the babies born alive act we'll get to that <laughs> boy i started reading the article and i just got so <laughs> you know how I'll, uh if you're regular here you know i don't do outrage youtube outrage youtube isn't my thing drama i know people love the drama it's not my thing, but holy cow, I started reading that article and I just got livid. So um, I stopped reading it. So we'll be reading it live together. <laughs> ah, frustrating. Anyways, like and share, like and share. 18 of you watching now, I will pop in and say how do you do in a moment. I am test writing this, putting SJW in, in titles that deserve it uh because i have been told that putting sjw in stuff actually drives up viewership for some bizarre reason and hey my last episode i put sjw disney goes lgbt yeah 420 views which you know it's not huge but uh it's better than the, the episode before it so i don't know maybe it's just the topic all right Dfresh, what's up p money rodwell stevens timothy best mecca mccheese jay hamilton captain hiltz zach richmond Dark Admiral March Hare, uh, Edwin Boyette in Magic Carpet Ride. Outrage, grr, do it, Mike. No, 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 no. I will pass. Captain L says, Gary didn't believe you were doing Titan d &Q. I think he pooed. <laughs> Did he poo? I hope he didn't poo his pants. Uh, all right, speaking of, let me uh, grab this. See if any of these God Squad folks want to pop in and Discuss. Nope, that's the bullpen. I don't want to put it in the bullpen. Where's my God Squad or Crossy? There we go. Mm, exam time. I know it would. It I would. I would likely have, have guests on here more regularly if I had a regular time or I uh, bothered giving them more than three seconds notice that I was going live. Ah, I see P Money has shared out. <clears throat> Isn't that a terrible stinking thumbnail of this like officer holding a baby that was found in a stairwell? Just terrible. Terrible. Unbelievable. How how could I use that? Such a thing. Uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. No outrage for me. Except for that. I am gonna be outraged. See, that's a thing. I'm not going to get outraged about Star Wars or Star Trek or even Doctor Who. I love all three of them, but I'm not going to get like, uh, you know, hey, God bless those guys who do. That's their thing. But I'm just a little more chill than that in general. So <laughs> partly because there's real things and i do apologize yeah i'm wearing the same shirt i haven't taken my shower yet what is on my shirt rice eggs something i made myself a mushroom and cheese omelet this morning it was quite delicious but that's neither here nor there um 
there's just there's real stuff and i don't want to bring i don't want to like bring the whole class down but i mean come on we're going to be talking about babies born alive not being offered the protection of babies born alive <clears throat> so um there are things worth getting outraged over and this is one of those things it was i didn't even bother going to christian headlines today i just saw this on Twitter and I'm like, you gotta be flipping kidding me. I was just, oh my gosh. <clears throat> on top of all the other garbage going on Twitter today, um, which, you know, that's every day, I suppose. <sighs> I get outraged at mosquitoes and coronavirus. Corona outrage. Um, I don't know. I did, 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 did. I'm hearing conflicting reports that Corona may be kind of the the new reports coming in from China are kind of you know going down. I could be wrong. Edwin Boyette will correct me if he knows some better information. But I haven't really been researching. I've just been kind of listening to some talking heads. Uh, nice. I think Mike's finally get me that Twitter timeout for sharing this. What? Twitter timeout? Oh, he called Siege a professional. He does care. Well, okay, not nine professionals. Like, eight professionals in Siege. <laughs> Happy hump day! Hey, Mike! Hey, Mike! What day is it? Hump day! It is hump day indeed. Mecca McTee says, it looks like Critias threw in the towel on Detective Dead. That is true. That is true. And I will state right now for, I don't, I'm, I'm not anti-CG. And I apologize to anyone who doesn't know what CG is. It's, it's a big mess. You don't want to know what it is. I'm not anti-CG. Um, but I know I have fans who might consider themselves that. Don't freaking go after Critias for this. Critias is a good guy. He's never stabbed me in the back. He's He was a novice who was shooting for the moon on his page count. And, you know, I mean, the, he made like $38,000 on his Indiegogo. And I'm like, bro, that ain't going to cut it for the freaking page count you got. But and he tried and he tried everything he could, everything possible he could to get enough money um, to make this book, and he couldn't. So um, he's thrown in the foul, the, the towel. And I, I implore anyone, don't freaking go after Critias for this. He's screwed up. He's a he's a rookie. He didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know what he was getting into. <clears throat> He aimed high and he fell short of of success. So, you know, hopefully he can uh, he can muster up and and try again and maybe try a forty eight page comic next time, Critias. But <clears throat> he's a great guy. He's a great writer. I don't want to see him just quit because of a failure. You know what? Thomas Jefferson failed. A th Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison failed a thousand times before he invented the world's greatest light bulb, the incandescent. <laughs> so please, I implore anyone out there who considers themselves anti-CG or XCG or whatever, do not use Critias as a bludgeon in your war against Ethan. All right? Please don't. I'm asking you as a favor. He is a good guy. He's not one of them. All right? He just made a mistake. He just made a mistake. It's disappointing, but I'm not at crit not mad at Critias. Please, thank you, thank you, everybody. <clears throat> um, P Money says I'm not mad and I won't go after him. But do I contact him for a refund or what? He's gonna make an effort to refund everybody. P Money. So uh, if you want to contact him and get in the front of the line, <laughs> feel free. Feel free. Uh, Edwin says, I don't want to make anyone miserable over $25 for that matter. Exactly. Yeah. 
Sounds a bit similar to what happened with George Alexopoulos. Too many pages and not enough funding. Keep trying and hang in there, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Um, people are already doing it. I know. Well, if you can, hey. <clears throat> if you can just reach out to him, just be, hey, hit the skids, man. Hit the skids. Yeah, he was. I mean, you guys remember it. He was part of all of us when we were all CG. And. But when when the fracturing started, he wasn't stabbing me or Edwin or Doug in the back, right? And he wasn't, and I was talking to him behind the scenes. So don't think of him as one of them. All right. Bad behavior doesn't justify more bad behavior, says Edwin Boyette. But that's that wasn't bad behavior. Critias didn't have any bad behavior in this whole stupid split, whatever you want to call it. Um, Thomas Edison didn't crowdfund the light bulb. No, <laughs> no, he did not. <clears throat> Ooh, that's a terrible question. Why do women love abortion so much? Abortion, just like pretty much every other left-wing policy I can think of is an attempt to evade personal responsibility. And for women who don't want to take the personal responsibility that they spread their legs and uh, invited someone to come live in their womb, um, they love abortion because it mitigates their need to be responsible for their own actions. Now, obviously, this doesn't count for rape. That's the only thing it doesn't count for. People say incest, but how do you not... Unless it's rape incest, then it's still someone making a decision and then not wanting to stand by their own responsibility. Uh, in my country, we are protesting the legalization of abortion, for example. Good. Keep it up. <laughs> They've learned not to value life. Um, if most women were against abortion, it would be illegal. Abortion, um, I think it benefits men more than it benefits uh, women. <laughs> the kind of men who want to take advantage of women have the, have the most to gain from abortion because they don't need to take care they don't have to be responsible for the pregnancies that they are responsible for. So there you go. <clears throat> uh, what happened with Critias? He, <laughs> frankly, he aimed too high. He set his page count on Detective Dead way too flippin' high. If he had done a 48-page book, $38,000 would have absolutely covered him to get that thing made. But, oh man, how, how big of a book was he trying to do? Let me see. Uh, story. 132-page graphic novel. <laughs> I'm like, get out of your mind. I thought he was out of his mind back then. <clears throat> I kind of saw this coming, but I thought maybe he'd have some way to, to fund it beyond that money. You can't do 132 page graphic novel. If you're paying an artist, you're paying a colorist, you're paying a, paying a letter, you're paying a printer, you're paying shipping. There's... That's why I tell everybody, don't listen to people who tell you to do big books. Unless you have a fan base that is going to roll up and pay for a 132 page book or a 90 page book aim 48, maybe 56 somewhere in that range. Don't go bigger than that. If especially new people, 48, 56 page graphic novel is you can tell a story. You don't have to tell an epic with your first product. It doesn't. So that's what happened. And so he he 
threw in the towel today and uh and is, there it is uh it is all in the math that is correct it's all in the math can you speak to the now systematic systemic trend of late comic book campaigns it's becoming ridiculous as are the excuses <clears throat> uh, I can speak to my own failures to meet shipping. Um, but yeah, they'll just sound like excuses. So for me, uh, what started me off? Well, the first time I had all my other issues, the Meg had its own issues. Lone Star 2 is having... <laughs> The issues is that, first of all, I added a whole nother book to the campaign. That meant I had to get that whole nother book and my first book colored. My colorist took on way too much work, so I just got all the colors in for Lone Star 2. Was it last week? Week and a half ago, maybe. Still haven't gotten all the colors in for Monster Hunt. Um, waiting on those. My letterist should be near done by now. I don't know what the hell's taking him so long. Um, so for my situation, it's well, aside from, aside from getting, you know, adding the other book, that was my first whoops. <laughs> this is going to add months to this project. Um, counting on other people to get stuff done. That's uh yeah. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to another colorist. I didn't want to jump ship in the middle of a book and switch colorists. And then I added the Brando pages to the new campaign, and those are being. Oh, actually, I got more color. I got more pages on those. You guys want to see? Uh, la, 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 la. <clears throat> I just got some pages in on that today. So, ba, 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 ba. I think we are more than halfway through. Oh, no, I think we're halfway through on those, so I'm just going to show you one page, though. Uh, open image in a new tab, and then I'll just... Why is this... All right. Here, share screen. <laughs> so here's Matt Weldon's beautiful artwork on Brando. And... Uh, that girl really should have black hair, but whatever. I'll let it slide. Uh, so cool. <laughs> so that is uh, one of the pages. So I have a few more pages to come in on or to come in on this. And then uh, a few more pages on Monster Hunt and then the lettering. And then we can slap that all together, get those to the printer and whew. So that's why I'm late. As for why other people are late, bad scheduling. This is also why I am, uh, I am, oh, I got another page on Monster Hunt today. Man, hold on a second. Where is it? Where is it? Not Monster Hunt, Magnificent Seven. This is why, by the way, for those who are wondering, I am absolutely going to get Magnificent Seven completely finished before. Can I open an image in a new tab? Yes. Before I launch that campaign. So here is the new page. I'm going to go in and do some tweaking on it, but. <laughs> oh, dang, that is super zoomed. Uh, all right, zoom back up. There is the page for Magnificent Seven. Uh, Weldon is so good. Isn't he, though? Isn't he, though? Crazy. Awesome add to the second printing. Well worth the buy. Yep, still available at LoneStarComic.com if you want to get that Weldon story in there. It is, it's worth it just for the eight-page Weldon story in the back. Um, Blacklist Universe. The color corrections you made on Soul of the Soldier added a lot of punch to the appearance for a small-time investment. Uh, thank you, Edwin. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, I might go back in and double check, make sure I'm happy with all of that. But yeah, this is uh, this is uh, <laughs> our gay frog friend, Alex Jones, getting pummeled. See, here's the thing. He's the strongest one there is, right? Because he's basically the Hulk. So they're all thinking, 
they he he can take him if if he can't take him you know like if alex if if the uh, uh the amphibious bulk can't take down meltdown who could and then meltdown just swats him away like a fly so uh yeah that's 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 all uh ju juta bant juta bant seaborn says i prefer larger hardcover books but i'm also willing to pay for the extra cost right on right on um yeah but that again if you're a newbie and you're trying to do a big fat hardcover book you're not it almost guaranteed it's not gonna happen almost guaranteed so uh let's see stop sharing that <clears throat> uh They saw he who shall not be named do it, so they thought they could do it. I don't know who that is. I actually don't know for sure, because nobody else did a 132-page book like that. Did they? You say big 120-page books are tough to do. Do are tough. Do you regret doing the Meg campaign since it didn't do as well as Lone Star? Hope I'm not stepping over the line with my question. No, 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 no. Um, I don't regret doing it, and I'm glad to have it uh, in stock. I will be adding it to different campaigns and whatnot as a backer, as a as an add-on perk. Um, but <sighs> sorry, I got <laughs> derailed by the <laughs> racist much question. Um, but all those books were done already. All I had to pay for was printing. I didn't have to pay for the production. Well, okay, that's not fair. On Meg, I still do have to pay for production. But, oh gosh, look at that. There's a gap in his arm I have to fix. I didn't even notice that. Um, I do have to pay for production on that, don't I? There are still some people I need to pay on that. But I was the biggest cost. I was the penciler and uh, par partially the writer. So me getting paid back for my work. Hey, you know what? I'd rather make something out of it than nothing out of it. So, uh, so yeah, I don't regret it at all. Uh, and dude, I have, I mean, I not only have the mag, which, wow, look at that. That's true. Oh, wow. That's cool. Uh, by the way, still available on Amazon for no additional shipping, just 25 bucks out, 24.99 out the gate get on over to amazon if you want to get a copy of this magnificent tome about a big white shark no it's not jaws it's jaws on crack um yeah amazon amazon just look it up meg graphic novel uh da, 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 da. yes heart of the hero redo is on uh, captain hills has the link in the description i'd say any first time creator doing a book over 48 pages is destined for failure unless they get just a, a lot of backing but you know what these guys going in here i don't know here, here's the thing is is if you're just trying to do a book and get it published or or get it printed and you can manage that on you know ten thousand dollars or whatever and then you make that like like look at uh look at nasser Nasser made ten, twelve thousand dollars or whatever on his books, and he printed them. And he's now he's got books. He's got books for a lot of guys. That's a huge, insurmountable step in 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 their career is is self publishing because it's like, can you pull ten thousand dollars out of your butt <laughs> to print do a, do a print run of a comic book um, with an artist? It's not easy for most people. So uh, if you can do something along those lines, you might be a, you might be good. But yeah, squirrels, squirrels everywhere. I know, I know. That was my idea to have Alex Jones. It wasn't just yours, man. I got, that's why I added them is because so many people kept asking me about Alex Jones. But uh, you were one of them. Very vibrant and kinetic. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, go sign up for that. MAGA7, MAGA7.com. Uh, Sierra Whiskey got me that website last night, and it's so much easier than finding the link. So MAGA7.com should take you straight to... Actually, let me type it in. MAGA7.com. It should take you to the sign-up page. <laughs> no, it doesn't. All right. <laughs> Whoops. 
All right, I'll fix that. You guys know what they're like. Anyways, let's get to the topic of the day, which is... Do, 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 do. These... Sorry if this is gonna get this is gonna get dark. Uh, are the Monster Hunt colors underway as well? Oh yeah, absolutely, Captain Hells. More than halfway done. More than halfway done. Uh, I truly appreciate how well the Meg displays Mike's knowledge of how certain female body parts are quite buoyant underwater. That drives me bananas. And it's not just underwater. It's when people draw women hanging upside down, but gravity is not affecting their chesticles right it's like are you have, do you know do you not do you, do you not understand uh biology at all uh it drives me crazy and yeah it's uh it's fat you know what fat does in water it floats i don't know if you guys come on now come on not hard uh anyways that is totally distracting ray thulu thank you very much um, or they have self-produced the art prior to launch. Yes. Uh, 26 minutes in. We need to get to this story. Now, Democrats block born alive abortion survivors protection act in the Senate. <sighs> Obviously I called this Democrats kill babies born alive act because killing babies born alive is exactly what it is. Babies born alive. And the Democrats, Democrats don't care, do they? It's all about the children, they always say. It's all about the children, unless you're trying to protect a woman's right to kill her own children. At that point, it's not about the children, is it? You're Satan. You are demonic. Anyone who calls himself a Christian in any way, shape, or form and votes for these people are voting for freaking Satan. I am not even being hyperbolic. This is Moloch. This is sacrificing children to the god of sex. That is what this is, and there's no freaking two ways around it. If you are pro-abortion, you are voting for Democrats, and you call yourself a Christian you're going to have to freaking figure that on out with Jesus because you are wrong in every step. <sighs> Sorry. I haven't even started reading this yet. I'm just so freaking livid about it. 41 Democratic senators voted this afternoon to block Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act successfully filibustering the legislation and preventing it from receiving a final vote. The bill would have required doctors to provide standard medical care to newborn babies who survive abortion procedures. Why do, why, why do we even need a law for this? But we do. That's how sick this stuff is. <laughs> 56 senators voted in favor of the legislation, including three Democrats, Bob Casey... Okay, there you go. Vote that guy back in. Doug Jones and Joe Manchin. All three also voted for the legislation when it came up to the floor last February, though Jones was considered a potential flip vote this year as he is up for re-election this November. Both Susan Collins of Maine and Lisa Murkowski of Alaska voted for the bill as well, despite the fact that they often break from the Republican Party on legislation that has anything to do with abortion. Last year, Murkowski did not vote on the Born Alive bill. Three senators, I guess she learned, huh? She probably heard a little something. Chris Mason says, Baal, Baphomet worship. That's right. Three senators who are running for president, Bernie Sanders, Amy Klobuchar, and Elizabeth Warren did not vote. All three voted against the legislation last February. Notably, very few Democratic senators took to the floor to deliver remarks explaining their votes against the legislation. Yesterday evening, Senator Steve Daines, Republican Montana, who founded the Senate's first pro-life caucus, led several Republicans in a colloquially colloquy? In a colloquy? That is a colloquy. There you go. There's a word I haven't, I'm not familiar with. I, have, I think I have heard it, though. 
uh, to deliver floor remarks in support of the bill. The next bill we'll be voting on tomorrow is the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. BASPA. Dane said, which mandates that if a baby is born alive following a botched abortion, the doctor must protect that baby and give the same medical care that any other baby would receive. Is that too much to ask for? No. It is the right to life, the first, the preeminent right of humankind, the right to life. The uh, attempted assassination aside, if the baby has, has, has survived the assassination attempt, it deserves the right to live. That is... Uh, Danes also noted that the American support, legis American support legislation to protect infants born under such circumstances, citing a survey last year that found 77% of described pro-choice voters believes ba believe babies born alive should be medically protected. They're shooting themselves in the foot. 77% of pro-choicers want this legislation. Who are they? That's how far left, by the way, the Democratic Party is. The Democratic people aren't as insane as the Democratic Party leadership. It's that's how socialist heading towards communist your modern Dem Democrat party is. So deal with that. If you're a Democrat bail, if you're a Democrat, I don't care if you're 12 generation Democrat, just next time, scratch that out and put independent. <laughs> you do not. When you're standing before Jesus Christ on judgment day and he says political affiliation, you do not want to be saying, I'm Democrat. <laughs> okay, well, uh, why don't you stand over here? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Several other Republicans followed Dane's remarks, including Mike Braun, Indiana, Joni Ernst, Iowa, and Ben Sass, Nebraska. The Born Alive Bill's latest sponsor, but... Unlike when the Senate voted on this bill last February, Democrats largely remained silent. Instead of coming to the floor to insist that the legislation was infringing on a woman's health care as they did last year, Democrats cast their no votes and sent out statements from their press offices explaining their votes. I guess this is kind of a bad look. They're okay with the vote. They just don't want the press. Sick people won't stand behind their own words. When Senator Dick Durbin, uh, Democrat, Illinois, objected to the legislation on the floor this afternoon before the vote, Sass excoriated him and used his remarks to explain how Democrats and other media allies hide behind euphemisms to avoid talking about the reality of the legislation. That's it? You can't end an article like that? It's a terrible way to end an article. So, yeah. Uh... Sorry if I get a little a little dramatic about life and death issues like this. It is definitely something that uh, riles me up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Baby blood is big business. Oof. Um, Edna to you says, I could never kill a life I helped create. Artemis says, I don't like political affiliations. Political parties quickly become cults. That's right. That's right, Artemis. I, I, I would never want to have to back somebody because they're a Republican. Because I'm a Republican. Because that's And that's why I never registered as a Republican. <laughs> I have been an independent since I first registered to vote in... Uh, oh, gosh, what year was that? 1990... I guess I registered to vote as soon as I turned 18. So my first vote was 1992. My first presidential election was 1992. Perot, baby! Registered independent, have stayed independent this entire time. 
P-Money says, well, I certainly won't say I'm a Democrat when I see God since I'm not American. I will say Canadian. Is that better, Mike? I don't know. At this point, I'm not sure, P-Money. <laughs> X-Gal says, glad I got out of that party. Independent all the way. Oh, my gosh. Have you gone to Facebook? Watch. If you go to Facebook and you look up the Walk Away campaign, holy cow, so many stories on there. Let's see. <laughs> 231,000 members in the walk away campaign share screen bam uh, diamond and silk 34 minutes ago Brianna, Brian, Brianna Northamere hello everyone I am Brianna I would like to share my walk away story as far as I can remember part of my family was democratic and the other part was republican I was also the in between always the always in between because I could see the issues from both sides. That was until Trump announced that he was running for president. I saw how one side could be so evil to another's viewpoints. I saw how they would blatantly throw words, racist or Nazis at people who even turned in the direction of the right as someone who is highly empathic. I thought it would, I thought empathetic, I think is the word she's looking for. I thought that it wasn't right. I didn't necessarily like Obama. But like many others in, in this group, I dealt with it, gritted our teeth, and went on our way. I recently graduated in 2019 as a young person going to school. I was always arguing more toward the right side of things. All right, she didn't really walk away. She just kind of stepped over to the right a little bit. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm the new guy. Voted Democrat my whole life because that's the only thing that I was allowed in my house growing up. After Obama's first term, my eyes started to shift. And I started to actually research for myself and pull the wool off my eyes. Voted for Trump in 2016, and damn sure will be again. With every passing day, the left makes me stronger in my convictions and inspiring me to open as many black and brown eyes as I can. Radical. Arkady Grudzinski. Hello. Hi, everyone. I support the liberal causes, gay rights, women's rights, to decide what to do with her body. Women's equality with men. I despise racism and xenophobia and believe that immigrants must have an opportunity in this land just like I had. I didn't like Bush's lies about weapons of mass destruction. In a, this is really long. I changed my voting registration from non-affiliated to Republican. I will not vote for a non-liberal. That's it. Sorry for long post. <laughs> awesome. All right, Nicole Smiley. And this is my walkaway story. I have, what happened? Oh no, holy cow. All right, I'm not reading that. Last thing. That being said, this isn't going to gain brownie points or, or to be pitied, but rather to share my story as a 21-year-old Christian performing artist who happens to like heavy metal living in a community that is predominantly against people like me. She's a heavy metal singer, Nicole Smiley. Let's see, who is this young lady? Uh, I am Nicole. Hmm. Lead vocalist for Over My Dead Body. All right. Well, there you go. I don't want to do walk away campaign all day. But uh, yeah, if you're on Facebook, you should go and just read some of those stories. They're great. They're great. That legitimately, so many people are just stepping out from that demonic hellhole called the Democrats. Democrats sounded like a cross between Ani and V. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. I also get to have rights over my own body to use it to kill someone else's body. Oh, do I also get? Yeah, right. Listen, no one hates communism more than the Baltics, right? Baltic, Balkans, Baltics, whatever Estonia region one. <laughs> Does the done, you comrades. Uh, Timotei says, yeah, when you actually listen to Obama's words, you understood how much of a snake he is. It's true. All right, let's see. Um, gosh, I want to talk about this, but I also need to get to... The scriptures. Yesterday, Kentucky had a special election for congressional seat. The Dems have held for nearly 30 years. It's a Republican seat now. Dude, they keep posting. Like, you go on Twitter and you see the Democrats and they have their little blue wave thing. Oh, baby. This is going to be a red wave with, like, 
a gazillion elephants on surfboards just rolling into town. This is going to be the greatest election. You thought 2016 was the greatest election of your life? No. This is going to be the greatest election of our lifetimes. Well, okay. 1988. No, 1984. But I was a kid. So the greatest election that I can vote in of my lifetime. This is going to be the closest thing to 1984 since 1984. It's going to be amazing. November elections will change the course of this nation. He will, We will either go very far left, nope, or Democratic Party will probably die. Hope so. I don't know if that's really going to happen, but I hope so. Hoping it's the latter. Get out and vote, people. It's a big deal. It is. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, let's get to Trump, anti-government, anti-institutions. Yes. And that's the thing. It's like Trump played the game by the rules, all right? He he greased the wheel, just like Bloomberg admitted in the... De oh, we haven't even talked about that Democratic debate. So much stupidity in such a short time. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. I'm still shocked about the secret war that killed half of Americans over the past 13 years. <laughs> Would somebody please retire that man in the good sense? Just look, get him a nice little, you know, beach house on the coast. Let him just look at the, <laughs> enjoy the sunsets, have a mojito. Go to bed at eight o'clock. Honestly, it's 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 way past your retirement time. Oh my gosh, 150 million Americans have died. <laughs> I didn't realize we were at this in a genocidal war for the past 13 years. That's uh that was amazing. Uh, in Colombia, we are combating uh, the new pro-abortion movement with the slogan, abortion doesn't prevent you becoming a mother. It just makes you the mother of a dead child. Oh, that's harsh and true. It's harsh and true. Pretty gnarly, man. All right, what do we got? What do we got? I got to find... I just... Computer needle blower receiver. Or room is going to flash and then send that email. That's me. Oh, yeah, that's me. All right, let me grab um, King James Bible online. I was trying to think what the website name was. And we are in Psalm 34 today. Psalm 34. 34. 34. Boop. Right? Yeah. All right. Share screen. Psalm 34. Mm. Valid slogan. Yep. 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 Uh, please take that one out to pastor. <laughs> yeah. Take him to the glue factor. <laughs> Oh, Joe. Poor Joe. All right. Uh, let's focus here, guys. We have uh, 16 minutes left, and we do want to focus on the scriptures for a bit, right? This is cross-examinations after all. Psalm chapter 34, a psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. That's harsh, right? Abimelech was uh, David's son who usurped his kingdom for a time, and he didn't want to have to go back and fight his own son. Because, you know, unlike all of these pro-abortion, pro-choice people, he didn't want to kill his own child. <sighs> Pretty sad. Pretty sad. Riveting question asked, what's your motto? Oh... <laughs> Uh, hashtag Castro was right. 
Hashtag Stalin had some good ideas. <laughs> uh, sorry, I gotta stop. All right, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were, were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. That David can be writing this while he is hiding for his life from his own son. That's, you know, that's why God says that David was a man after his own heart. Did he screw up? Yes. Did he cause bad things to happen? Yes. Was he an adulterer and a murderer? Yes. Was he a failure at things? Yes. But he was a repentant man who put God... I want to say he put God first, but this is, this is how he reacts in the most destitute and difficult of times. He's writing... That the Lord heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You're literally like in a cave hiding from your son. And he's delivered you from all your fears. That's amazing. They looked unto him. They were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. That's trust. That's faith, man. That is what that is what being a man of God is. It's faith, even in the worst of circumstances, even in the most dire of times. It's trusting that he will deliver you. And is it just in having that trust is believing that he has delivered you? Wow. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. I'm going through my own stuff right now, and this is just reminding me not to stress, right? You give your worries, you give your problems over to the Lord. And he says, you know, he will take your yoke and he'll give it, give you his. And his burden is light. So, uh, this is so, such a powerful truth. I hope you guys under, can, can feel, you know, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. There is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life? And loveth many days that he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart, 
and saveth such as be of contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. He finally gets to that. <laughs> He's hiding from his own son. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Okay, that's got to be um, prophecy. Because even the righteous have broken bones. That's got to be talking about Christ. Evil shall slay the wicked. Oh my gosh. Evil shall slay the wicked. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Gosh, dang it. I almost want to get that tattooed. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Amen. Oof. That is so encouraging and uh, uplifting. Do you guys feel that? Do you guys feel that uplifting? I don't know who's going. Everybody goes through stuff. But if you're going through stuff right now, is that not just such a bolster to your faith, to your to your walk? Oh, man, that's good stuff. Good stuff, man. I'm so glad you guys are here. It's like you're holding me account accountable to doing devotionals, sitting down and reading a psalm every day and spending time, you know, not just blowing through it, but thinking about it verse by verse as we go through it. And if you have questions or discussion points, then we can we can enter into sort of the Bible study of this. Ace says, I feel it, Mike. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Goosebumps abound. I know, right? <laughs> can you see? You can't see, huh? Yeah, my hairs are so... F I have such fine hairs you wouldn't be able to see anyways. Oh, man. Good stuff. Um... Uh... Jay says, David's story is a perfect example of how God can redeem and save even the worst of us. That is correct. Uh, Ninja says, I don't like debating with Bible bangers, meaning picking scriptures to justify your dirt. Bible bangers. Well, here's the deal, dude. Um, we all screw up. If you're trying to use the Bible to justify being a screw up, then you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to be using the Bible, all of the Bible, um, to conform to the Bible, uh, not to conform the Bible to you. Yeah, 16. Stalin cared deeply about stopping population growth to save the planet. <laughs> Stalin was an environmentalist. Jeez. Speaking of David, Artemis says, and I thought my family was difficult. <laughs> Uh, evil, Ra in Hebrew is synonymous with disaster as in Isaiah 45 7 disaster shall slay the wicked eh, let's go into it and uh, let's see if this is the same word blue letter bible uh, da -da -da. Uh, this is Psalm 34 Therefore, 21, 21. Yep, Ra. That is correct. Uh, Ra, bad, or as noun, evil, nature, nat natural or moral, adversity, affliction, bad, calamity, displeasure, distress, evil. This is Strong's definition. Great grief, harm, heavy, hurtful, ill, mark, mischievous, misery, Naughty, noisome, not please, that's weird, sadly, sore, sorrow, trouble, vex, wicked, worse, wretchedness, wrong. Uh, the lexicon says it's a feminine adjective. <laughs> and, uh, let's not go there. Uh, evil, bad, physically as of an animal, bad, cattle, 
bad waters wicked so uh that is the jewish hebrew that is a hebrew um pretty much live in stuff so this is helpful right on right on jay says i'm in my bible in the morning and then before bed right on right on sin and turn away from sin yep yep uh buddha is cool says ace buddha is dead brother uh xcal says no true christian justifies bad behavior with the bible ideally that is true xcal but as you know we are all human uh, ninja ka says buddha was an intriguing character indeed yeah i've uh I've researched, and uh, my mom's a Buddhist, so she's a Nichiren Daishoni uh, follower. But yeah, I know the whole Buddha story. Uh, da, 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 da. God blesses, and we read the Psalms in order every day. Yep, yep, yep. I still love my Jesus. I trust God. I just don't trust some of his people. <laughs> Well, some of his people are like David. They'll kill you and then repent afterwards. <laughs> I know. We're all human, man. We're all human. Uh, da, 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 da. Ray Thula says, Does Ra, meaning evil in Hebrew, predate their little vacation in Egypt? Or maybe does it stem from then? Well, the language predates egypt i'm sure they had to have a word for evil prior to them going to egypt actually there are those who speculate that hebrew was the original language on earth that's the language that adam and eve spoke because there are some words and i'm not sure exactly i don't remember the exact justification for this theory um, but there are words and meanings of words and stuff spoken of in, oh, uh, no, no, what it is, it's names of stuff that have meaning that predate the Jews, right? Predate Abraham, um, or whatever in the old Testament that only makes sense if Hebrew was the language that was spoken like in the Garden of Eden. So I don't remember the whole thing, but that it is a theory. You guys can look it up yourself. I'm not really, it's not that important to me. Uh, da, 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 da. It also, why Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged. Well, uh, Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged for wherewith the measure you judge the same measure shall be measured unto you. That is a horrible, horrible paraphrase, but it's roughly close. It's basically saying, don't be a hypocrite. If I'm out here looking at porn, which I'm not, by the way, um, and then I'm like telling my, judging my friend or my son or not that, well, okay, I'm not going to get into my son. Uh, <laughs> telling somebody else what a horrible, horrible, rotten person they are for looking at porn then I'm a hypocrite because I've got that oh, log in my eye and I'm telling them to get the splinter out of theirs. All right, dumbest name, peace out. Thanks for being here. Oh, I never even put the like and share thing, but what the heck, we only have a minute left. So he who is without sin shall cast the first stone. Uh, it's let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And it was a direct challenge to these people that was a great story all right in jesus in the new testament when he is confronted because what the jews the uh the jewish leadership the sanhedrin was trying to have happen was that they didn't have the right of corporal punishment they weren't allowed to kill people right they it the they said it um when they were putting jesus up and they brought him to Pontius Pilate, and they just said it straight out. They said it's not legal for us to kill people, because if they were taking they, the law, the the right of self governance of sovereignty um, was taken from from uh, Judea, I think, in eight A.D. And so, what they were trying to do was set Jesus up in a catch twenty two. 
All right, we're going to bring someone who is obviously guilty of a crime punishable by Jewish law by stoning, right? She's an adulteress. Adulteresses are to be stoned. The Torah says so. We're going to challenge this guy who says he's speaking for God or whatever if he if he abides Jewish law then he has he has to order this girl to be stoned and then we can go to Pontius Pilate and say hey this guy ordered a girl to be murdered against Roman law if he doesn't do it then he's breaking Jewish law and therefore cannot be the Messiah. Right? They brought him in this, this perfect trap. Hey, Jesus, either choice you make here, you're screwed. Right? And what does Jesus do? Let he who is among you cast the first stone. With, who is without sin among you cast the first stone. Jesus is the best. <laughs> so good, man. So good. Um, anyways, uh, would be good to get into Proverbs sometime, Mike. Yeah, well, I want to get through. It's going to take a long time to get through this, but maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyhow, we are over a minute over. So, uh, guys, do get out there. Back Bigfoot Bill 2. Back Titan. Um, let's see. Oh, my book, Magnificent Seven. Go sign up for that. Maybe I'll change that link in the description. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Like, share, do all that fun stuff. And uh, Lone Star, LoneStarComic.com, still available uh, for my my comic book, Lone Star. You can get Lone Star 1, you can get Lone Star 2, and you can get Monster Hunt. Should be done with those pretty soon all the art's been done for a while just waiting for the colors to come in and the letters and then we're off to print so thanks all god bless have a blessed day um drawn and quartered tonight be back here at seven o'clock pacific time between then and now i'll probably be doing some art corrections or something probably on mike draws comics my other channel so do go over there and subscribe god bless guys we'll see you later On your feet! Get them going!